Last week we finished the study of Philippians and we were talking about how the church at Philippi had engaged themselves in the support of the apostle Paul and his team giving the gospel and how God was blessing the church at Philippi through the prayers of the apostle Paul and gratitude for their sharing of the ministry. And I ask us today, what is your part? What are you doing? What am I doing right now in reaching out uh, the world with the gospel? Did you know Jesus early on revealed? And I'm just going to share this. I know you don't have notes. You can write it down. Very simple message this morning. Jesus revealed early in his teaching ministry exactly who he was and what he came to do. He, re he let people know who he was and what he came to do. Jesus came to the earth not to visit. He came on a mission. Do you have a mission? Do you have a purpose when you get up in the morning? Are you a visitor? Jesus had a mission. He says it right here. He goes to a church in Nazareth and he preaches. He takes the scriptures. He reads it. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Holy Spirit is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What was he anointed to do? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind to set free those who are downtrodden. Jesus is quoting an Old Testament prophet. And then he says in here to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And then what did he do? What did Jesus do? He closed the scroll. And everybody's watching him. He closes the scroll. Everybody is fixed on him. And he said to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The prophecy was fulfilled. Right there. And he rolls it up and he sits down. And the people were amazed. And they are saying, who is this person? What, what, kind, of, what kind of person speaks like that? But what he did was he revealed who he was and that the Spirit of God was upon him, anointing him to preach the gospel to the poor. He multiplied. He had a mission, but he also had a method. When Jesus came, he knew what his mission was, but he had to engage others to join him. He invited and commanded others to come in and join him because he said this mission is for the whole world. And he knew he only had three years. You've been five years in Mexico. Jesus did his whole ministry in three. Three public years of ministry. And look what happened. He changed the world. You've changed the world in your world in five years. It's different now. What have we done in the last five years? It's, it's not something, it's something that if you're focused on what you're going to do and what God has called you to do, great things can happen. Let's look to God for great things. Let's look to God to send missionaries out. Let's start more churches. Let's get involved in getting the gospel out to the unrun. We've got 40 tribes that were just mentioned tonight, today. 40. Maybe we ought to take one and start praying for them. What are we doing? It starts in prayer. It starts with a passion. Jesus took and multiplied his effort through those who believed in him. Jesus had a method. He had a method. He had a mission and he had a method. There it is, the two M's for the sermon today, mission and method. He said he multiplied his effort using those who believe. Look at Luke 10, 1 and 2. Now after this, the Lord appointed how many others? Can you read it? 70, 70 others. And he sent them out to and two. So he sent out how many teams? 35. Already Jesus had a group following him. And so now he takes, okay, I'm going to pick you, 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 and you. Came up to 70. Interesting number. Sent out 35 teams. And he said to them, here's what you're to do. I want you to go ahead to the place, every city where I'm going to come and preach. And I want you to go out there and be a part of what I am doing in preaching the gospel. And then he said this, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are what? He's, Jesus saw the world as absolutely being ready to harvest for the Lord. And he saw very few people working it. Why? They were working in their own fields. They were working doing their own thing. They were either blind to it or they were hardened to it. They weren't willing 
to do the job. But Jesus said, pray. He says, I ask you, beseech. The word means to beg. To beg the Lord of the harvest to do what? Send out laborers into his harvest. And so Jesus restated over and over again. He would clearly go in and let people have no doubt about what his mission was. He said in this passage in, in uh, 1910 of Luke, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Whatever it may be. And families through centuries and other countries and other cultures are doing their part. But this is his mission. His mission was to come to seek and to save the lost. And that's what they, he lived for. And that's what he died for. Is that what you live for? Are you willing to die for it? Like our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan just did. He commanded his followers to get the word out. He told them, get the word out. He told them, Mark, he had a method. Again, going back to the method, passing it off to others, telling them what to say. In Mark 16, 15, he said to them, go into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel everywhere. I mean, we want to say creation to all creation. That means everywhere in creation. I mean, that's a big place. Distractions. We get distracted. It's not that we don't know. It's that we get distracted. You know, it happened in the beginning. Did you know that even the disciples were distracted? Easily distracted. They had their focus changed. It amazes me sometimes how when people are doing things, how they can lose their focus on what they're doing at the most important time in their, in their work. And they can lose distraction. They get distracted by the silliest things. And that's part of being human. You know, in Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they had come together, they were asking the Lord. The Lord has a mission and a method. He's told them what it is. He's getting ready to leave. And he says to them, all the things he's doing. And then they go, Lord, is it at this time you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? And they wanted to talk about prophecy. They wanted to talk about what God intends to do. They had a plan and they wanted to talk about God's plan. Did you ever get into things like that in the Bible? You get into prophecy or you get into some aspect of, of the Bible and a Bible study. And those Bible studies, they all seem so good. I mean, we're talking about the Bible. Lord, you're coming. Is it now or not? And you know, the Lord's response is pretty good. He's telling them, stay on focus. It's not for you to know what God has appointed for the end of the age. God has already got that in control. Let God be God. He says, I have given you a message. I want you to get the message out. Listen, sometimes we get distracted and we get focusing on stupid things or things of less importance to the mission that God has and getting people saved. And it's so easy to do. Even the apostles were distracted. As a matter of fact, he told them that right there. And so you'd think, well, we got that all taken care of, right? He says that in verse, Jesus had to refocus his followers on what they were to do. And I'm attempting right now to have us all refocus on what it is God would have me to do. It's a mission and a method that applies today as well as it did at that time. And that mission and method, he says, it's not times for you to know this. God has fixed these things by his own authority. But, he says, following that, you, hold it, you, this is where it is for you, you shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my what? I want to ask this question. Are you a witness for Jesus Christ? Are you a witness for Jesus Christ? Do you regularly witness for Jesus Christ? You see, the part that we have to play is to be a witness. Jesus said that to his apostles, and they did it. It's amazing when you see how people come to know Christ, especially new believers. Oftentimes, they understand this totally. But older believers get distracted with other things in life. What is it that's distracting you from getting that message out? Do you know, it's a sobering question. He says, I want you to be my witnesses. 
Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the remotest part of the earth. By the way, the remotest part of the earth back then would be Miami. Okay, it would have been one of the remotest parts of the earth. And so he said that. And after he said this thing, listen to this. Look at what it says there. After he said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Wow. Now he'd already told them what to do. You know what happened? Here it comes again. Distraction. Right away. Distraction. What was the distraction? Jesus taking off in the way he did. They're all sitting there. They're staring up into heaven. He's gone. I mean, the whole thing's over. They're still looking. They're still looking. Look at what the angels said. Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? Why do you stand here looking into the sky? There must have been something inordinate about that. Looking into the sky. That they had already lost the focus. Have you lost your focus? Are you looking into the sky? What is it that God's given you to serve him with? To get that gospel out to the lost tribes. To get the word out. To get the word out to Miami. I'm so frustrated at times myself thinking about how big this city is. And it's nothing compared to Mexico City. And all the work that we should do in the body of Christ to reach this city. But then, what about the places that have no message whatsoever? They have no gospel. What are we doing? Have we lost our focus? Are we standing here looking into the sky? And I pray today that those of you who know Christ will do just that. Resharpen. Refocus. Look at Jesus, not the sky. Heavenly Father, as we thank you for this morning and the thoughts we've had, we're just so grateful to have Oscar and Sharon and Katya and Jay Lynn here with us today. And we pray, Lord, your great blessing upon them and their families. And we pray, Lord, your support would increase for them and that you would just raise up and do much more even than what you've done already, which is pretty amazing. We thank you for them. Father, for those of us that already know you, we've been touched by your grace. We know that when you came here, you died for wicked people. And that's what we are. All of us are wicked. All of us seek our own way. Every one of us has gone astray. We've all failed many times at doing what is right. And yet, Lord, your Savior Jesus came and he took a complete penalty, what we deserved, he took on himself. I don't think we'll ever appreciate that as much as when we see your face. When we realize, how could you have done that for me? But you did. Lord, since you did that for us freely, how can we not let others know about it? It's that simple. 